So when it comes back to um, veto override, those four votes are what saves us. Um, we actually had veto session, you know, it's by constitution uh, uh, this past, I guess it was cut several weeks ago, and it's designated a certain day that we all come in with the opportunity to address um, legislation the governor has vetoed. And guess what they did this year? <coughs> What they did is they all of a sudden, you know, it's all the hoopla, all the announcements, and everybody introducing, you know, their family and friends. And then they read the list of the bills that the governor vetoed, and then they adjourned. And we're just like, what just happened? <laughs> because they did not have the votes on any of the um, bills that the governor had vetoed to stop. And I'll tell you one of the most important bills. The most important issues, and I'll try to explain it real quickly here, and um, that's voter ID. Yeah. That, became, that became my issue real quickly. Um, yes. Because that's repealing the right to vote. Yeah. It's suppressing. Suppressing. It's better word. Yeah. Suppressing the right to vote. Yeah. Definitely. Most definitely. All right, here's a brief history on it. 2006, um, they passed it in the legislature, um, and um, Governor Blunt signed it, and uh, went to the state Supreme Court. My husband was one of the, again, one of the lead attorneys on this. So you can imagine when this stuff is going on in your household, you kind of osmosis, kind of, kind of learn what, what's, what the issue's about. Um, uh, Supreme Court threw it out as being unconstitutional, <coughs> okay? So now if you're going to try to pass voter ID, you've got to do what? Change the Constitution, right? You can't just pass a law. Now you have to go back and, and change that so then, you know, it's no longer unconstitutional. Um, you've, heard of the, you've heard the organization ALEC, A-L-E-C. Um, voter ID, you know, is, is, is not new. This past uh, legislative session, legislative year, 34 states, not just Missouri, we were the leader. 34 states this past <coughs> session uh, were trying to pass voter ID legislation to suppress Democrats, basically, who go to the polls. And you know what it is. It show, happened to show a state-issued photo identification. Sounds good on the surface. Most, a lot of people don't have those. Um, but a couple of years ago, we passed the, uh, we tightened up the laws in terms of how do you go get a state ID? You've got to have your birth certificate and have all this other oh, stuff. Geez. But if you don't have that stuff, <laughs> and how much is it going to cost you to get that stuff? And where do you go get that stuff? No, they don't care about that. <laughs> because who are those? Who are those people? They're minorities. They're low income. There's uh, predominantly women. They are uh, dis disabled. They're primarily, um, you know. Oh. Students. Oh, oh, students are in there too. So who are all those people? Those are Democrats, right? It makes sense why these 34 states, you know, um, but there's two states, there's another state that's, that mirrors us almost identical, and that's North Carolina. Democratic governor, Republican legislature, and guess what? They're identical to us. They needed four, they, the Republicans need four of their votes to stop an override, or to override a, a, a governor's veto. Identical, identical to Missouri. They did it. They did it just like us. And how we did it is, and it's hard. You know, we've got 57 of us. You know, we talk about the Big Ten. You know, we're all over the map. We all have different kinds of districts. We all kind of have different things we, we care about, not just progressive stuff. But trying to hurt the cats and say, look, this is a democratic issue. We have to vote. We have to vote as a caucus. We have to stand together. This is a democratic, not just in Missouri, Again, this is nationwide. Yes. Um, working with Denise Lieberman, who you should invite to come speak with. She's uh, with the National Voter Protection Project. She happens to live in Missouri, so this is like one of her territories. But she works, you know, on, on, on she works nationally. She and I worked really closely together to, and you, a lot of you probably helped to influence our Democrats in the House stick together. We took our only caucus position in the Democratic caucus, which again, that was a little little to do there, make sure that we got that done. Um, we told the governor, hey, Governor Beto, we can, we can stand by, we will stand by you. And that was my job in terms of making sure the House Dems were, were together and stayed together. We kept one more year to do it, so we had to stay together once more time. Um, but it's two parts. You're going to see it on the ballot in 2012. I want you to understand that's the part that changes the Constitution. What is it actually going to be? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not because the reason I'm not sure is because right now there's at least two, probably three, lawsuits to try to stop that language, 
to kind of mess with the, the language so the Secretary of State will not approve it. Okay? Um, that's ongoing. Will it say that it's going to change the Constitution? So people I'm not sure. Are, are I'm not sure because understand. that's up to the Secretary of State to actually approve the language that will go on the ballot. Right, right. Oh, that's going to be a whole other ballgame, guys. Once we, once we start again, you know, once we get closer to the elections next year, is trying to educate everybody. That this is bad. This is wrong. Um, and you're going to be seeing. We're, we're, we've tried really hard to get some national attention with us being first, and now with the 34 states, and now it is nationwide. I mean, you're seeing from DMC, you're seeing. MSNBC, CNN, everybody's talking about it now because of that giant push by the Republicans. Okay, so it's got to get on the ballot to change the Constitution, right? Right now, the polling shows that most people think it's a good idea because they don't understand that. They don't understand, they don't understand that, that, well, everybody has a photo ID, right? Go to the bank, use the photo ID, right? No. Everybody thinks so. Not true. Not everybody does. Not everybody can get one. Um, can I? I? I don't understand then what what was going on in the legislature this year. Okay, let me try to explain. This is two part, okay? So, first of all, they gotta change the Constitution so we don't have another Supreme Court fight. The Supreme Court already said you can't do it. The way the Constitution's written, you gotta change it. So that's why the only way to change our Constitution is for the people to change it, okay? It's gonna go on the ballot in 2012 unless we can stop it in the courts. Second part, okay, once you change that Constitution, You've got to have enabling legislation. You have to have a law that says, how do you do voter ID? How do you do it? Who pays for it? When does it go into effect? All the details. That's the bill that we actually stopped this year. That's the bill that the governor vetoed. That's the bill that they didn't even bother to bring to the floor because they knew we were standing strong and we were going, we were going to sustain the governor on that. They'll most likely <laughs> file that bill once again. Try the same thing. Our numbers are going to be the same. They still need four of our votes. They're not going to get four of our votes because we're going to make sure we keep our Democrats heard. So you understand it's a two-part thing. Now, even if it, if it does say scenario lawsuits don't work, the um, people vote in because they don't understand it, change our Constitution to voter ID. We still have to have that as a law. We still have to do it. Um, and then here's the other like giant question mark. The um, uh, state auditor, who they all got really upset about this one, came back and said that the fiscal note on this was $20 million over three years. Who, where's that money come from? We have to appropriate that money somehow in the budget process to pay for the voter ID. So that's like the third step. If the law says we have to do it, who's going to get paid for it? You know who, who loses in that end? If we don't pay for it, if we don't know, the county clerks will still have to, by law, do it, but they're going to have to pay for it, and they're going to lose at a local level. That's why they're against it. They were saying, wait a minute, you can't make us do something and don't give us money to help pay for it. You can't, you can't do those to stay well in here. So that's a whole issue, trying to do it real, real quickly, so you understand. But that's really how the Progressive Caucus was really um, vital, because we could then go to um, the few of our Democrats that are in non-progressive districts, and they would come to me and say, Stacy, Stacy, how do I do this? How do I do this? You know, they're gonna, people are going to kill me back home. I said, no, they're not. No, they're not, because here's what the issue is. This is how it hurts all of your voters, particularly in rural. Think about it. Elderly. Um, immigrants, I have aunts that won't be able to vote because they can't get the birth certificate. They're somewhere in Germany. They can't get them anymore. And they've been voting, they've been citizens for over 50 years. These are existing voters, people. These are not brand new people. These are existing voters. And you know there's no voter fraud. There has not been one case proven, one case documented, one case prosecuted in Missouri. There was one a few years ago. But not actually coming into a place voter impersonation fraud. What they're what they're talking about? Voter registration fraud. Voting, voting in two states on the same. Right, state. right. They, yeah. But it's voter registration fraud that's out there. Does voter ID fix that? No. No. You know who's the most uh, famous case right now? Who's uh, Don Aiken? Definitely. Voting <laughs> for 20 years in a house that's vacant. That's voter fraud. That's what happens. Dead people don't show up to vote. 
Dogs don't come into the polling place and vote. They might be on, they might be registered to vote, but who cares who's registered to vote? They're not going to show up, right? I mean, that's what all that hullabaloo is. And the Republicans, when they argue, are going to tell you flat out, oh, there's ACORN and there's voter registration, I mean, there's voter fraud, blah, blah, blah. They won't tell you what kind of voter fraud they're talking about. And they won't tell you they're doing the same thing themselves.